Welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and this is Sincerely Sews. Today I'm going to be testing out sewing gadgets. So let's get right to it. The first sewing gadget I have to try out today is this As Seen on TV product. It's called the Sewing Genie. I got this one at a thrift shop a couple years ago. I played around with it a little bit, but I wasn't super impressed, so it ended up just living in the back of my closet. I was recently knocking these machines on TikTok, and by the way, if you're not following me on TikTok, you definitely should, because I post new sewing videos every single day. A lot of my followers said that they really love this machine, so I thought I'd better give it another try. So let's take it out of the box. Here is the machine. It's really tiny. It's about as big as my hand. And there's a teeny tiny baby foot pedal. All right, if we flip it over, we can see there is a compartment for batteries. So let's open that up and see what it looks like. Maybe try that again without the violence. It looks like it takes AA batteries, so let's put that in there. It has a bobbin, and this other bobbin here is the thread that you actually sew with, so this is the top thread. On the back side, it also has an extra bar that you can flip up to hold a bigger spool of thread. I've taken the time to double check this and make sure that it's threaded correctly, so now we're gonna give it another shot. Right, the foot pedal goes right here and I've got some scrap fabric to try. One thing that's frustrating about this machine is it has absolutely no seam gauge on it. It's just, you definitely would have to measure your seam guide and put tape on here or something to see what seam allowance you're working with. But let's just give it a try. That was not very eventful. This foot pedal doesn't work at all. So let's just take that off. There's also a blue button here that you can run it off the blue button and it's quite loud. Ah, it's very loud and very obnoxious. All right, and my thread has already broken and it didn't sew a thing. This is frustrating to no end. Please leave me a comment down below. Is it worth buying a brand new one on Amazon and giving it a try? I'm really interested to see because I have not gotten a decent stitch out of this machine ever. I don't know if it's because the one that I purchased came from a thrift shop. I have dinked around with the tension settings so many times. I have taken the bobbin out and put it back in many times. I've even rewound the bobbin. I really like the idea of a battery powered sewing machine that you can travel with, but this is just not it for me. This one, definitely a thumbs down. This device is a handheld chain stitch machine. I picked this one up at Michael's Craft Stores, but I've also seen it sold at Amazon and other retailers as well. Let's open the box and see what's inside. It looks like this one comes with three extra bobbins, some extra needles, and a needle threader as well. Okay, ooh. Here's what this looks like. Instead of a hand wheel on this machine, this dial here will raise and lower the needle, and you spin it in a counterclockwise direction. It has a place to put a power cord in it, and it's also battery operated. And this is the button that makes the machine go. If you slide it all the way forward, the machine will run continuously without you having to keep your finger on the trigger. This one takes four AA batteries, so let's stick those in here. This handheld machine will do a chain stitch, which means there's only one thread, not an upper thread and a bottom that link together. So in order to prevent this line of stitching to come out, we'll have to make a knot. 
Now, as you can see, if I just pull this thread, all of the stitching is going to come out because it's just a chain stitch. So it's very easy to remove, but there is a way to stop the chain stitch from coming out. I do apologize that this line of stitching is a little bit wonky. I'm trying to do all of this backwards so that the camera gets a better forward facing view of what we're working on. So how do we prevent the chain stitch from coming undone? You want to grab a needle and thread and take the tail of the chain stitch from where it came off of the machine and then push the tail to the reverse side or the underside of your project. Now that I've brought the tail of the sewing down through to the bottom side, I'm going to take my needle and pull on this last loop of the chain stitch to make it a little bit bigger. So this loop right here is the very last loop of that chain stitch from the bottom side. Then I'm just going to come under and grab the tail that we brought through and I'm pulling the tail through the last loop of the chain stitch. And now when I pull on that tail, the chain stitch is locked in place and will not come undone. And now this chain stitch can be used for whatever you need to repair. The last sewing gadget I have to try today is the Singer Quick Stitch. I got this one brand new at Walmart, so let's take it out of the box and see what it does. So already right out of the box, this is very cute. I like this bluish green color. It has a place for being a handheld machine or a desktop machine, or you can lock it. This is another machine that has both a bobbin and a top thread. This also has a little carrying case that comes with extra bobbins. It even comes with a needle threader and some extra needles. It's very nice to have these and very convenient to have a compartment to fit them in right inside of the machine. This is the hand wheel right on top, a lever on the back right here that will raise and lower the presser foot, tension, the upper thread, the bobbin is in this compartment, and this one the battery compartment is right here and it takes four double A's. A problem I see on this machine too is that there is absolutely no seam gauge built in. So again, if you're going to be following a specific seam allowance, you're going to want to measure this and put a piece of tape down. This is the swatch that it came with. So now I'm going to try running some test fabric through it. Here's my swatch of pink from the last machine. We'll see if we get a better result this time. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is doing something. All right, let me take this fabric out and then I'll show you what it looks like. I'm gonna use this dial to raise the needle all the way up before I pull the fabric out. So here's the seam it sewed. I just sewed a section of this fabric. This is a pretty sturdy stitch, so I'm impressed with this machine. There's no backstitch feature on this machine, so in order to prevent your seam from coming undone, you would definitely need to tie the ends together by hand. When this machine is set to handheld, the machine will run continuously while you pull the trigger. When this machine is set to desktop mode, compress the trigger and it will run continuously until the trigger is compressed again. So overall, I'm gonna give this machine a thumbs up. I'm really happy with the way that it handled. The seam that it creates is nice and secure. It's very lightweight. This machine is small enough that it would fit inside of a suitcase and not take up too much space. I also like that this machine has a way to function by continuous mode or by only running when you press on the trigger. Some of the drawbacks of this machine are that there is no gauge for your seam allowance and there's no backstitch feature, so you do have to tie off the ends by hand. However, if you're in a pinch or you just need a lightweight sewing solution, this could be a lot faster than having to hand sew your project. It's not a replacement for a full-size sewing machine, but I definitely think that this is a gadget worth checking out. So here's all three of the sewing gadgets we tested today. I can say I definitely could recommend both the Singer Quick Stitch 
and the handheld chain stitch machine. I was definitely not impressed with the Sewing Genie. If you think it'd be worthwhile to try purchasing a brand new machine and giving that a test, leave me a comment down below. I would really love to hear what you think. If you have one of these machines and you love it, are there any tricks that I should know to help the machine work? For now, I can say I would not recommend these small sewing machines. I think it's a much better investment to just buy a full-sized sewing machine. There are lots of machines out there that are lightweight and easy to travel with that would do a full range of stitches, and it just seems like this is probably more of a gimmick than anything. Especially when there's a unit like the Singer Stitch Quick that does everything the Sewing Genie promises, but in an even more lightweight and compact gadget. This handheld chain stitch machine is definitely better than I thought it was going to be. This is definitely going to be faster than trying to hand sew the hem of a pants or a hem of a dress or something like that. I can also see the benefit in either of these for repairing things that are difficult to take down, like curtains. So all in all, I would definitely recommend this Singer Quick Stitch or the mini chain stitch machine. I would not recommend this mini sewing machine, but perhaps you had a better experience with it. If you'd like to check out either of these machines, I'll leave them linked in the description box below. If you purchase these machines from my Amazon Influencer Store, it'll help support my channel at no extra cost to you. What did you think of these machines? Have you tried any of these gadgets? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more sewing content. Thanks for watching.